Hi, I'm Chip Wood, and today we'll learn how to set up GarageBand to record voiceover. To get started, you'll need a quality condenser microphone, an XLR cable, and a preamp to begin recording. Start by plugging the mic cable into the USB port on your laptop. So let's open the Finder. We'll scroll to Applications. And all the way down here at the bottom, we have Utilities. Let's expand that. Scroll down to Audio MIDI Setup. Open that. Here you'll see that it's presently set up to use the Mac's built-in microphone and built-in speaker. But once I plug in the MicPort Pro preamp, that will appear in the audio device pane, meaning that the computer has recognized it. Go to your preferences, and we'll set a few of these in the general pane. Cycle off and on should both be set to merge. And in the audio MIDI tab, this is what it would normally look like before the microphone was connected. But since the system has already recognized my microphone, it's going to look like this. So every time you launch GarageBand, you're going to get this pop-up indicating that it can't find the interface that it's accustomed to. So just click OK, then plug in your microphone, and the system will recognize it. So let's launch GarageBand. And here we have a number of options. One of them is voice. We're not going to use that because it's going to add some effects that we don't want because we're recording a dry vocal. So let's go with empty project. And obviously we're going to choose to use a microphone here. So let's use that. To get this set up properly for voiceover, we're going to hide the library, show editor, turn off the metronome and the count in, Move to the left, and we'll switch from beats to time. Because it's so important to work efficiently when recording voiceover, let me show you how quickly you can set up a new project using keyboard shortcuts. Command New, Enter, Enter, Y, E, K, Shift K, and then manually move to time. And you're there. Now we want the proper spacing in both the timeline and the editing pane. At the bottom, you can see a blue line around each pane. The editing pane here is selected. If I click here, you'll see the blue line switch to the timeline. So let's go down to the editing pane. We're going to stretch this time out a bit. Command, arrow right, and you'll see the seconds get longer. And we want to extend one second to right about there. Now in the timeline, it's a condensed version. So in the span of one second, we have almost three to view in the timeline. And of course, you can see that the playhead moves much more quickly in the editing pane. Now I have a number of projects to do today, and I have one track selected here. This plus sign right here will prompt you to select what type of track you would like. And I'm going to cancel because there's a shortcut for that. Just select the first track and then Command D. Another great advantage of this is if you're recording a vocabulary list or several IVR messages, your tracks are already numbered. And here, I would just have to put the name of the client. Let's say David. Enter. And the rest of the tracks are already numbered for me. In the next episode, we'll look at the basics of editing the audio waveform. Thanks for watching.